traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray feeling good, Lewis. Billy Ray Valentine from the offices of 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19143 zip code. And believe it or not, we are in the offices of Duke and Duke. And let's take a look at the gold market here, folks. We had a high over here at 2084. We dropped $100. We rallied back to exactly 61% retracement of the high from this area right here right to the penny and we also made a 78 percent retracement from this intermediate high which was also a 50 percent retracement but after that you notice the market came down and if you were patient just a few days ago like it's try on friday you went right up here and hit the exact 382 retracement there at the 2030 and uh, you can see we are moving down now, this ABCD structure that we're looking at measures to 1974. Now, that's a very, very important number. You can see here that's the 1.618 expansion. We know those are very, very important, okay? So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at gold really closely today just so you can get an idea that it is predictable, you know, within limits. You know, not all of it, but within limits. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is um, let's get this up here so we can see it and uh, this is where we are on the longer term time frame did i do this right i think i did here's where we want to go now i blown i blown this up this is the same chart i just blew it up a little bit because it's important for what might be coming and i just want to get this uh, up here so you'll be able to see it this is exactly the same chart and then I'm going to go down to a smaller time frame just to show you you know how some aggressive traders handle this but there was your 382 retracement that was done several days ago okay here we are Tuesday this was actually done uh, Sunday night we've had the big breakdown right here and you can see our measures right here to this 1618 which is around 1974 but here's what's happened today folks if we look at this on a much shorter time frame, please tell me that it's up here because if it here it is, it's right here. I knew it was here. Now this is just a four minute chart, but it's over a four hour period, which is a lifetime for some people, <laughs> especially those that uh, day trade. I don't do too much of that, but I do like uh, the type of trading that Tom Hugard does. Now look at this folks. There was your 135 pattern this morning, okay? Just absolutely spot on. And the, there was your first 382 retracement right here. That took uh, just about a half hour. This one took about 15 minutes, 382. This one took about 15 minutes, 382. And now we're heading down. The number that we're looking at, and this will be in the, to tonight's, because we're getting close, we're at 1993 right now. We're looking for 1974. That's not very far away, but we have to think of this. And let's get this up here and take a look at it because this has been a big move. And we said there was a possibility that we might get down there. And this has been one of these where you'd get a 20% correction down into this area right here. If we could get the uh, down to 1900, that would be down $280 from the high, which would be equal to the $280 move that we had here. It would be setting exactly at the 382 retracement. So the question is, are we going to stop at 1977 or are we going to go straight down? I will be a buyer after I do all the work tonight. I will do. I will be a buyer on that because I see all the numbers that I'm looking at intraday over the 5 to 10 day period. Now remember, this is a daily chart, so it's different. You don't see all that little stuff in here. 
like you do with the microscope that we're looking at. And we're going to look at some microscopic things today, folks, because this is how you manage risk. At least that's how I manage risk. And you'll see what's happening. But we have a chance that we might get here. So if we get to 1977 and then we have a little rally and then it takes us down to here, folks, this is Christmas Day because you'd have a 135 pattern. It's be setting right at the 382 of the low way back here. Are you kidding me? And it would be setting at the 61% retracement of this number right here. That's where you want to be looking. But before we get to that point, we've got to get to 1977. And I do believe that's where we are going to be going is 1977. I hope that answers that question. Okay. Now, the second thing that I wanted to cover was the corn. Because remember, we had a big rally in corn yesterday. And I tried to tell the folks on the uh, – um, <laughs> excuse me – on the uh, – video that I put out on corn last night is that all we did was make, oh, you ought to try putting the chart up, Larry, and everybody could see it instead of just you. And this is the shorter term version of the corn. And this is where we were. And I said, all this is, is a 78% retracement of this move right here. And if the trading gods are with us, we have a chance to see this A, B, CD form down right here and there. You see that 1.618 number, folks? You'll never guess what that number is. And Johnny's got his hand up and he says, it's not 382, it's not 786, it's not 127. He says it is 1.618. And then if you add that to what we've been watching for just about a week and a half now or longer, is this chart here on long-term July corn coming in right here. There's your long-term ABCD coming in exactly at our number, 492. And, folks, we're not very far away. We're only 10 cents away. And if we can move 20 cents like we did yesterday, we can certainly get down to this level right here. So that's what we're paying a close attention to today, folks. So let's uh, remind ourselves that's uh, that's what we're doing here uh, in the corn market. Uh, we're also watching wheat, and we're also, we're also watching beans and bean oil. But the real easy one, from our pr perspective, is the fact that that's uh, what we're looking at. And I have some information from our good friend Rich Anderson uh, regarding that stuff. And this is uh, came from Charlie Biello, who's an old. Uh, no, he's not old. He's a young floor trader. Well, he doesn't trade on the floor anymore. But he shows us here. The price of uh, ammonia or uh, <laughs> ammonia fertilizer uh, to get the you know get the crops ready has dropped precipitously, almost crash-like. You can see the big crash we had here. This crash was even bigger. So just just a, uh, just a year ago, when things were really heavy in the old uh, ammonia business, uh, fertilizer. And if anybody knows more about fertilizer, I should raise my hand. I speak of it many times. Anyway, as you can see, we've had a big correction. That has nothing that I don't trade ammonia or anything like that. I'm just showing you that the farmers are getting a break. So that's why they're planting so darn much. And that's why we need the corn. Let's take a break. 877-927-6648. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. Okay, folks, um, those of you that have been listening to me for the last seven or eight days know that I have really watched this pattern unfold here in the NASDAQ at uh, thirteen thousand four ninety four. We sold it. Uh, on Thursday and Friday, we both had a $2,000 profit in it, and yesterday we had about an $1,800 profit in it, and we ended up breaking even on the trade. I sent out a video on it. Uh, we were about 40 points below our buy stop when I sent the video out, but I, I had a, a sense that because that it didn't break after the first two that once we went above this, you didn't want to have anything to do with it. So what I suggested was put your stop at your break-even point, which was 13,494. And 13,494 was hit. And then I said, what you want to do is you want to watch for an expansion. Because what they're going to do is they're going to run the market up based on one or two stocks. Because remember, this is the NASDAQ 100. And it all it takes is one really expensive stock to make this thing move that much. You've seen it happen many, many times. So I'm gonna walk through what I did this morning as I, sent, as I sent the video out. And this was the video I was doing, and I did it over an hour and a half period, so I just used a four minute chart. That way I could see the pattern unfold, you know, relatively easily. I didn't update it or anything. I just put it up here, and I said, you've got two targets up here at 1540 at 13 13,545 and I said sell it at 13,545 because you're going to have a beautiful ABCD pattern up there with a three drive to a top pattern you've got to use a 20 point stop just like we did before when we were down there at the 494 level but this is what we have to be doing and I explained to them that I believed and this was my opinion that it was just probably one or two stocks that was making the thing go gaga. So I turned on CNBC to see what the gaga report was going to be. And sure enough, it was uh, Michael Burry, if you remember him from the, uh, the good old days of the short seller. And he was telling everybody that uh, his main stock uh, was NVIDIA and uh, he thought it was going to the moon along with Mr. Musk's uh, uh, patrons. Anyway, you can see uh, we've uh, there's there's the move right here. There's the move in the Nasdaq right there. 
So we're close to where we think we could be. So all I did was I moved it down to that area, said, okay, if I can get to that area, I don't have to risk very much from that point. All of the other indices are still down, folks. The S&P is down, the, NAS, uh, the, the Dow Jones is down, the Russell is down, and, and some of the other stocks uh, like Bank of America is down, and Target is down, and Home Depot is down. But th th that doesn't mean very much. I'm just looking at that from a perspective of how I manage the risk of how I wanted to see, to see it work out. Because early in the morning, I wanted to show you, because early in this, in the, in this morning when I was hearing this, I knew that the earnings or whatever it was that came out on NVIDIA, it might have been Michael Burry. You see, it just made a new high. Well, I can tell by just looking at this ABCD, we're going to get up into this area right here, at least to 299 and 300. And so I just went to the NASDAQ because it's a big part of this. And I came up with that number. It's trading roughly at the same price, but it had a 20-point stop on it. Now, if I lose on that trade, will I feel bad? Nope, not for one second. Because we've been short gold. Uh, we were short the euro. You talk about a market, and we did this on the air yesterday. And uh, most people, when they see these things, they say, oh, well, there's not too much to ABCDs. But by golly, folks, this is the most actively traded thing in the world. It trades a thousand, one trillion dollars a day. You can see the ABC. Look, there's your 382 retracement right here. And there's your ABCD pattern right here. Look at the perfect 0.382 off of the last perfect 382. This is a downtrend, folks. Look at this. You've got lower tops and lower bottoms. There's your there's your 135 pattern right here, right at the 382. And look, it took took two days to form that, just like it did this one right here. And so we're all the way down into this area right here. So that's why if I start focusing on my losing trades, folks, you're not going to be able to listen to me very much because, you know, I do have losers and I have them all the time, but I try to point them out to show you what I did wrong. And uh, the faster I can do that, the faster I can move on to uh, to the next trade. Mark Douglas used to say, he said, look, he said, you just like in telephone sales, so you don't have to put up with the frustration. I said, what, the, what are you talking about, telephone sales? Look, he says, if you're doing telephone sales and you have to pick up the phone and dial 100 times, he said, you're only going to get about three to five calls where you're going to be able to sell something. And I says, well, I can certainly do better than three or five percent. He said, of course you can. That's the whole principle of it. So if you have a losing trade, figure it was a bad call and dial again. And that's what I try to do is when I look at these things, dial again. So I look at the corn to see how that's working out. That hasn't been filled yet, but it's getting close. We missed the hogs by a heartbeat. They're up and they're almost up eight cents from where our order was. And we missed it by about a Fifty dollars is all, and uh, but anyway, those are the ones that you got to just keep moving and 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 trying to do the ones that are that are right there in front of you. Now, if you remember, I spoke very. This was about silver, really important, because we had that number. Uh oh, we have a caller coming in. It's, somebody got through on the line. Are you kidding me? My goodness, we got Michael calling in. Michael, what can I do for you, my friend? Yeah, hi, hi. Thanks for finally taking my call. What can I do for you? Um, yeah, the time frame that we're in right now with the market is such a narrow rally, like four, four or five uh, bank stocks that are just keeping the market up. Is it, is it reminiscent of late October, early November 2007? Uh, no, I can't remember back that far, Mike. I really can't. But these charts never change very much day to day. They uh -huh. really don't. So I don't think uh, I don't think that's a problem. So I just move on and not even not even think about it. It'll correct itself in one day without any trouble. Really, I see. Okay, yeah. so realistically, what's what's the outlook here? I mean, uh, if they if they walk out of the White House today, shaking hands, buddy, buddy. Do they is it by the rumor sell the news or or do they just keep rallying? I I will have to wait till that happens and then because I, I don't I don't react to news I let to see that I see what the market reacts to the news and then I'll react on it because they could sign it they could sign this deal and it might be so bearish yeah. that the market goes down they might sell a uh, sell three trillion dollar uh, you know debt increase or something like that and if that happens who knows what I react to what 
the charts are telling me. I don't listen to the news at all, Mike. None, zero, bupkis, nothing, uh -huh. ever. Really. I, I mean, I just, I mean, there's just negative news in Europe. And Vodafone nothing. Just, uh, announced uh, 10,000 employees uh, terminated. You know, we had the, we had the, like uh, hypersonic missiles on Kiev overnight, yeah. and, and Ternopil and Western Ukraine, and, and they shrugged that off. You know, and they shrugged these layoffs. Yeah. You know, and they, they shrugged off Home Depot's earnings. You know, yeah. and, and the poor That's guidance. why I don't listen to the news. It doesn't mean doesn't mean anything, my friend. Listen, we got to pay a few bills now, but thanks for calling in, Mike. We'll be right back, folks. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight with Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back, and we have as our guest today, Jeff Huge of Alpha Insights. Jeff, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Larry. Thanks for having me on the show today. It's our pleasure, my friend, and you're going to talk to us about the leadership index is nearing key resistance. What does well, that mean? Well, you know, the leadership, yeah, the leadership index has been this NASDAQ 100, and as uh, all will know, it's really been the FANG stocks or the mega cap tech stops, tech and com and internet, 
uh, that have been leading this market all the way. Uh, in fact, uh, the Dow and the S&P on an equal weighted basis are, are barely even in positive territory year to date. And without the uh, help of the NASDAQ, you know, we'd be in big trouble. And what this chart's really telling us is that, uh, you know, we're running into resistance. We're running right into the level where uh, the market topped back in August of last year. Uh, it's right on the 100-week simple moving average. And we're coming up to that key reference pr uh, point that everybody knows about, the 50% retracement, which is an ominous resistance point in and of itself. And so, you know, I think the confluence of these three resistance points, kind of right in this general vicinity, 13 500 to 13600 range um, that really says to me that we're pretty long in the tooth here and we need to be prepared for uh, a trend reversal at any point in time and if you look at the lower panel here you'll see that among nasdaq stocks only about 38 percent of all nasdaq stocks there's about 3600 of them uh, are even trading above their 50-day moving average I think the number's 30% for the 200-day moving average. Wow. Jeff, you've sent a lot of great charts to me over the last couple of years, but this next one to me, absolutely, I actually studied it for about 30 minutes. And for me to spend 30 minutes on a chart, I I was blown away. This is a broad market non-confirmation. This is, this is really scary. Well, yeah, you know, the problem is if you take a look at the broad stock market, it's clear that it topped back on February 2nd. But the NASDAQ made this secondary push higher to new highs. And I think the reason for that was so much money piled into, again, these top mega cap names in the NASDAQ 100 uh, as, as a flight to safety. Because, you know, these big cap tech stocks like Apple have $100 billion in cash on their balance sheet. And, you know, people are looking at these fortress balance sheets and thinking, well, this is the safety trade within equities. And so, you know, we had that push from the middle of March up to new highs Today, we've made an intraday new high on the NASDAQ 100, but it is unconfirmed by the S&P and the Dow today. Obviously, both are in negative territory, uh, some, you know, 1% decline, I think, in the Dow. But um, if we look at the really broad market, the Wilshire 5000, the Russell 3000, the Dow Jones composite, which covers the industrials, the transports, and the utilities, or the value line arithmetic index, we can see that none of those index have uh, uh, come anywhere close to topping near their February 2nd high. In fact, all of them are well below that level. And in the case of the value line arithmetic, uh, you know, plumbing its lows, really. So, um, you know, my concern here, again, is that these non-confirmations between the NASDAQ and, and the senior indexes, as well as these very broad market um, uh, indexes, suggest that, uh, you know, it, put it this way, Larry, it's not a bullish sign. Uh, these non-confirmations tend to precede a trend reversal. And so I think that's what we need to be prepared for, a topping in this NASDAQ 100 and with it, the rest of the market as those big stocks come down. Yeah, I know there's just a few of them in there that go crazy, but boy, when they go crazy, they really go crazy. <laughs> okay, the next one, uh, this one here, I, I don't quite understand this one. This is new highs, on the new lows. If you'll explain to the folks, because uh, you know, I don't follow the, the this type of thing, Jeff, and uh, the chart has me a little bit confused. So could you tell me, uh, explain this to me. What, what, the, 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 the line that bothers, I can see the gray line, but the line yeah. going down, uh, that's what I don't understand. So, let me explain it. So the gray, the gray area chart is the NASDAQ 100, okay, uh, going back about two years or so. And what we're looking at in the, in the, in the dark line is the um, net new highs minus new lows, okay? Every single day we take the new highs minus new lows, and then we add the, the sum together, okay? And if we're making more new highs than new lows on a net basis, that line should be going up, okay? But what's been happening since uh, really um, the market peaked back in November of 2021, um, that line's been going straight down. And as of yesterday's close, it made a new 52-week low uh, and so when new highs 
are making new lows. So we're looking at this net new highs. It's inconsistent with the new bull market, right? A bull market should be attended by more stocks making new highs than are making new lows. And that is not the case. And we're not just looking at the NYSE or the NASDAQ. We're looking at all U.S. stocks. So every single stock that's publicly traded in the United States of America goes into this index. And more of them are making new lows than new highs. And when we add that all together, it's dragged that cumulative net new high line down to a new 52-week low. That's a scary thing in the face of, you know, a presumed new bull market. That's not consistent with uh, that statement, right? Boy, it certainly isn't. That's uh, those two of them back to back that I looked at. That th that's what I thought what was saying. But the thing that confused me was the fact that you're making more new lows than you are new highs, and you're setting at a 50% retracement. That means that there's only got to be a dozen stocks or so that are making that uh, thing go up, and they must be high priced. So it's got to be cap weighted then. That has been my point exactly. You know, these super cap names have driven the indexes to these recovery highs, but the average stock has not participated at all. Wow. It scares me and I'm fearless. Holy cow, this is really, a, it's really an amazing one to, uh, to see this because uh, you see the Russell, the Russell just, uh, just can't, every time the Russell starts to go up, it, 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 it goes down. So there's no, no friends there a, at all. And of course, we've got the Dow Jones down and we even got the S&P down. It's only the NASDAQ today. And that's been due to, uh, I think, uh, NVIDIA is the one. And it's been in the news all day long because of Michael Burry, you know, the guy that did the shorts, uh, the great, the big short. He uh, He's right. along that stock and he thinks it's going to go along with Mr. Musk up to the Mars on the next rocket ship. So that's <laughs> where it's going today as it approaches 300 bucks. We're going to have to pay a, a few bills here in just a second, but we're going to have you back. We've got a whole minute to go. So um, why don't you um, let's just do the next one and we'll get. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, Larry, let me just make a comment on NVIDIA because, you know, um, the 13 F's were released yesterday and we saw. A whole bunch of misinformation uh, put out there. These are trades that took place in the first quarter, right? So, you know, this is not uh, uh, information that's in real time. We're being told what Michael Burry did between January 1st and March 31st, right? And he oh. could very well have uh, sold the stock by now. And that's the problem. Oh, okay. So, okay. <laughs> That makes good sense. Hey, we'll be right back with Jeff Hughes of Alpha Insights, folks. Please stay tuned. 877-927-6648. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hey, folks, we're back with uh, Jeff Hughes of Alpha Insights, and he's got another chart he's going to uh, bring to our attention where we are totally skewed, S-K-E-W-E-D. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Larry. We are skewed, no doubt about it. Um, you know, this, this chart probably deserves a little more explanation than normal. The CBOE SKU index, S-K-E-U index, uh, it's a strike independent measure of the slope of implied volatility, the implied volatility curve itself. And um, this index increases as the implied volatility curve steepens. And so, you know, really what it's the way it's calculated is you take the, the price of a tradable portfolio of out of the money S&P 500 options, kind of like the VITs. OK, and the portfolio constitutes an exposure to the skewness of S&P 500 returns, and its price actually encapsulates how the market is pricing tail risk, specifically left tail risk. And so when the value of this skew index is equal to 100, the distribution of S&P 500 returns is normal. Uh, but as it approaches 145, the probability of a return that is two standard deviations below the mean, in other words, a downside uh, move, gradually increases from a very low level of about 2% to a very high level of about 15%. Now, you know, we think about the VIX, right? And I've juxtaposed this, this chart mm -hmm. over the VIX as well. The VIX is really a proxy for standard deviation. And it captures yes. that first layer of perceived risk what the SKU captures is a whole new, uh, whole new layer of risk. And so when you get really high values of SKU, you can have both high and low values of VIX. But when the value of VIX is low and the SKU is high, the risk of a black swan event is at its most elevated level. And so what this chart is basically telling you is we've got VIX very compressed down around 17%. And we've got skew at 140, which is very, very high, um, you know, relatively speaking, right? Um, and the two of them together suggest that we are probably as close <coughs> as we've been to a black swan event. And everybody knows that, you know, the U.S. debt ceiling is being debated right now uh, by congressional leaders and the president. And, you know, they're, they're kind of at a, a crossroads, right? Nobody's willing to give way. And the real risk is that, you know, maybe we have some sort of a debt default or technical default uh, in the U.S. And, and what would that do to markets? Uh, the capital markets are all based off treasuries. Right. And so, you know, I don't think we're going to get some kind of a calamity there. But the market is set up for one. And the slightest little thing, uh, you know, it's a hair trigger. It could set the markets reeling. And so. I think the setup here is is extremely uh, risky, and uh, I do not think now is the time to be bold. 
Well, I'd have to agree with you on that one, my friend. And I think two politicians, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, they can't agree on anything. And you just can't keep <laughs> borrowing money like we've been borrowing money. I mean, it's just uh, it's just total insanity. And, you know, it's actually embarrassing for me because I have to speak with people across the pond quite a bit. And, and they're, they're actually no different than we are. And they and I said these are just the same people. They're, you know, they're just called politicians. That's what their job is: is to confuse everybody. I think. And you know what? I better get off of my soapbox, otherwise I will probably be banned forever by Jeff Hughes and Associates. <laughs> uh, let's let's move on to the next uh, to the next chart here because your charts are, are what tells the story, and that's what we like to see. So I, this is the one I think is I'm I'm incredibly bearish, and I sh probably shouldn't be, but uh, let's get this up here so we can take a, uh, a quick look at it. And uh, this is the um, uh, your bearish. Uh, I love that three drive to a top pattern. That's the one to me is the, and we're seeing divergences in it every day. Wow, I, yeah. I just don't understand how anybody can be bullish up in here. But please, can tell us what you're looking at, Jeff. Well, as you know, we use Elliott Wave as, as our primary model to kind of just gauge where we are in this whole process. And what we're looking at here is um, multiple tops of a second wave. We have the August 16th high, which was primary wave two. Uh, we've got the February 2nd high, which is intermediate wave two. And we've got the May 1st high, which is minor wave two. And we've already seen one five-wave decline off of that, which we're counting as minute wave one, and a three-wave recovery, which topped on, uh, I believe, May 10th. And we're calling that minute wave two. If we're correct, and if we see the next move down below, say, 4,039, that will confirm that we are in the midst of a third degree de or third wave decline at four degrees of trend. Minute wave, minor wave, intermediate wave, and primary wave down. And and so this this third wave decline should carry prices to new lows below the October 13th low, but it should carry prices so significantly lower than that. Um, we're actually looking for a minimum decline of 2750 on the S&P. We think that's wow. the bare minimum uh, that we should expect for uh, the decline. And, you know, I was talking to one of my good friends the other day, Doug Ramsey at the Luthold Group, and uh, he calculates fair value on the market to be around 2900 So, you know, if the market just got to fair value, um, that'd kind of be in the wheelhouse of what we're looking for to the downside. Well, that's a pretty significant move to the downside. Jeff, we have a question uh, from uh, one of our listeners over here on, in Prescott, Arizona, up in the mountains. And he's asking, uh, what happens if they pass the debt ceiling and the people don't want to buy the bonds? Is, is that a factor? Let's say that uh, you know, they, they sell a lot what, of bonds. Nobody knows what would happen, Larry. I mean, that's never, ever been the case before. So, I mean, that would be an unprecedented set of circumstances. And it's certainly consistent with the setup that we see in the SKU index relative to the VIX. So mm -hmm. um, I think that's what the market is bracing for. Well, that's certainly going to be an issue. I noticed they had Michael Burry on today because of his uh, NVIDIA, and you mentioned he could have been out of it. Like like we hear Warren Buffett say things, and, and we know that uh, when, what Warren says and what he does is totally different. <laughs> that yeah. much I'm 100% I'm sure. we got to pay a few bills here. And we come back, I want you to tell the folks, oh, we've we got more time, right? In fact, let's just, we've got another chart. Let's get it up, and then we can also um, get that up here to tell you about your monthly newsletter. And then when you get back, we'll have some more time uh, to even do that because I, I love that letter. It's got some great common sense stuff in it. And uh, go ahead, tell us about your monthly newsletter, Jeff. Sure. Well, yeah, so we publish a monthly newsletter, and it's available to the public. You can subscribe for for free on Substack and get it delivered into your mailbox. We we do charge for the full access, so we give a, a preview of the first three or four pages. It's a pretty good preview of what we're putting out, but it's usually about a 20-page document with 25 to 30 charts. Uh, kind of lays out the entire you know macro perspective, what we see happening in the economy, how it's affecting the markets, and then we give our our forecast of and, and positioning. So our forecast of how we see the market playing out and how we're positioned to take advantage of the moves one way or another. And, you know, investors who want to access that, they can pay $12 a month and get full access. 
uh, and, and become a paid subscriber and you get lots of benefits. Listen, thanks for joining us, my friend. We'll see you at 2.30. How's that? Absolutely. Talk to you again okay. soon. You bet. Jeff Hughes, Alpha Insights, going to review his stuff again on the next hour. We'll be right back, folks. 877-927-6648. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, we still got the markets uh, acting pretty good. Only uh, the NASDAQ is up, but the others are down slightly. Not a big deal. I did post a chart here from uh, someone that was kind enough to send me that shows that the value of Apple, folks, this is going to be hard for many of us to believe, but the value of Apple is worth more than all of the stocks in the Russell 2000. Can you, can you even think about how big a deal that is? The price of Apple is worth more than all of those stocks combined of the 2,000 stocks. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Boy, if that's not the sign of anti-diversification, then I've never heard of it. But my goodness, it has been an incredible stock. You know, you have to give the master Steve Jobs uh, great credit and also Mr. Wozniak, who was the bra brains behind the outfit. But my goodness, that's just an incredible feat to see the stock at that. I think it hit 174 on this last run right now. It's trading around 172 today with the rest of the NASDAQ stocks being up uh, sharply. Of course, the big leader of the pack in the NASDAQ has been NVIDIA. 
And, of course, because of Michael Burry from The Great Short uh, was talking about how things are going. Um, remember, folks, uh, tomorrow we're going to have Stan Harley as our guest, both at 1.30 and 2.30. And on Thursday, we'll have Norman, who calls it to the Minute Winsky, will be our guest. And uh, he'll be just on the one show. And then the on Friday, we'll have Bill Meridian on one show. But it'll be an extended show on Friday because he has so much to give us uh, on his monthly uh, projections for cycles research out of Vienna Vostra. So he'll be he'll be our guest uh, on Friday. So we'll be back with you here in a few minutes after we pay a, a few uh, bills here. In just a minute, but if you do have any calls, it's 877-927-6648. 